want you to open your mouth and pray to the Lord this coming year, higher ground, greater territory, greater power, greater authority, greater accomplishment, higher ground, higher ground, spiritually, higher ground. In your family, higher ground. Your profession, higher ground. In obedience to the Lord, higher ground. The spiritual, supernatural strength, higher ground. In holiness, Sanctification, higher ground. In evangelism, soul winning, higher ground. In victory over temptation, higher ground. In prayer, having prayer, praying without ceasing, higher ground, right attitude towards God, praising the Lord always, higher ground, setting the priority of your life. Living according to the word of God, going only God's direction, higher ground. Unity in the church, unity of the brethren, agreement on a court, higher ground. In the proclamation of the transforming gospel, higher ground, more than you ever did, more than you ever did, higher, higher commitment to the Great Commission, higher commitment to serving the Lord. submission the success in promotion in prosperity in the provision of the Lord for you and your family higher ground In being watchful and wise. So you don't plunge yourself in preventable tragedy. Higher ground. Higher wisdom. Higher courage. Higher. That in the new year you will not be as so well in the old year. Your love towards God, higher ground. Your love for saints, for the believers, higher ground. In your love to reach out to sinners and bring them into the kingdom, higher ground.
in overcoming all the influence of Satan. Higher ground. Your ability to say no to all the influence of Satan. Higher ground. Your Pentecostal experience. Higher ground. Tell the Lord to help you seek His face, seek His grace, ask the Lord to help you, empower you, close you with power. give you the victory in every situation. The tempters will come. The temptresses will come to weaken your soul, weaken your conviction. You are telling the Lord, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith from heaven's table land, a love and joy and light abound. Lord, lead me on unto higher ground. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to the conclusion of this retreat. Thank you, Lord, because you are a God of power and a God of all possibilities. And you grant power and faith and courage and boldness and fearlessness to your people. And Lord, we pray at this time that your power we we'll still call me to everyone so that, Lord, whatever we face in the coming days, whatever we face in the coming year, Lord, the power to overcome, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, our mind will be centered on your word. Our eyes will be looking on you. Our hearts will be meditating on your word. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we know we're going to overcome in every challenge and every difficulty in Jesus' name. Temptations will come. Trials will come. Troubles will come. Persecution will come. Lord, because we know everyone that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And therefore, Lord, we pray in times of persecution, in times of pain and pressure, in times of trials and temptation, the power to stand solidly upon your word, your grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. That, Lord, every day and every moment, it will be for us to glorify your name. We pray, Lord, as you lead us into this message now, the power to go forth and to go out and evangelize all around us. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered already. And all we need to be able to do, everything we need to do, you'll grant unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, 
I thank the Lord who has brought us to the conclusion now of this retreat. I will thank you because of what you have emphasized to us. That here we are on earth, pilgrims on our way to heaven. And as we're walking along, there will be detractors and tempters that will not want us to get to the edge of the journey. That's why the Lord has brought us together here so that He will equip us and He will prepare us. He will empower us so that all the power we need, all the strength we need, all the ability we need, all the skill we need, not just to do something within a few hours, a few days, a few, but to walk confidently, courageously, and fearlessly and boldly in the kingdom and walking all through life victoriously. That's why he brought us here. And I believe he has strengthened us already. And the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus' name. He has empowered us. Power for the present hour. Every day of our lives, we're going to keep on experiencing that power in Jesus' name. We will not fail. We will not fall. Because the power of the Lord will hold us up in Jesus' name. Now he wants us to go out and do exploits. Exploits through Pentecostal witness. Before Jesus left his disciples, here is what he gave them Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to how many? Every creature. The Lord Jesus Christ led a great commission. And he says, This is the great assignment I'm giving you. I have died, I'm going to now go to heaven. He's died for the world already. He shared his blood, but he said, everybody must know about this for their salvation. Everybody around you, everybody in your community, everybody in your state, everybody in your region, everybody in the nation, everybody everywhere. So he said, go ye into all the world and do what? Tell me out loud and preach the gospel to every creature. It says, proclaim that gospel, announce that gospel, spread that gospel, tell everybody around you in your world that Jesus Christ died for the sinner. Tell everybody around you that Jesus Christ is the Savior and He is the only Savior. Go ye therefore into all the world, He said, and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel is the good news, the good news of salvation, the good news of the grace of God, the good news of the love of God, that God loves everyone and is not willing that anybody should perish. Tell everyone that to everyone. Preach that to everyone. Emphasize that to everyone. The number one thing you ought to do, if you are not able to do any other thing, this is the number one thing a believer, a child of God is supposed to do. Tell him the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Proclaiming the good news of salvation and the good news of the mercy of God, of the love of God unto everyone around you. And he said, go. That word go is a verb, a word of action. Not just you see it in church, or worshiping in church, or singing in the church, or praying in the church, or doing maintenance in the church. Go. Go to the people out there. The people in the world, the people who are sinners, the people that need to hear of the words of salvation. And then it says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. I pray that our people will not be damned. Your relatives will not be damned. 
Your friends will not be damned. Even your enemies will not be damned. That's why it says, if they are not going to experience damnation, if they are not going to perish already, the love of God is manifested in sending Jesus Christ to die for us. And now the responsibility is for you to go and tell them. And go and tell everyone around. And then it says in verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now signs don't follow people who are just sitting somewhere. It follows people who are on the go. Who are following people who are on the move. The people who are taking the gospel and taking it everywhere. Those are the people that the power, the anointing, the gifts of the spirit and the manifestation of supernatural power will follow. And then it says, this son shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils and then he goes on to say they shall speak with new tongues and they shall take up serpents and they shall not hurt them if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them it says they shall lay their hands on the sick what will happen what will happen now you need to pay attention i've been emphasizing coming back to the bible coming back to the bible it says they shall lay their hands on the sea and they shall do what recover it doesn't say only the pastor will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover they all the preachers all the people who are going forth all the believers who are going forth all the good news who are going forth with the transforming gospel we are the people not just one man the days of just one man show, the days of just a soloist, all that is gone. Everybody has we rise up in the power of the Lord and in the strength, in the might of the Spirit of God. It says, They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And you know, sometimes, uh, even though we read that in the Bible, when it comes to the practice, 